Perspective absolutely matters. And here's what I mean. An example, someone who bought Neo, let's say in the 30s or 40s or 50s or even in the 60s. Maybe they're frustrated because on Friday, the stock price action, it was trading below $12. But my thought, and this is kind of a simplistic view, but that's me. I'm a simple guy. I'm thinking to myself, well, if they weren't planning on selling that day, why are they worked up over it? And, and if they don't mind holding or if they weren't looking at long term, why would they not want to consider looking at the long term? Uh, that's my thought, my view. But again, I've been long term since the beginning. 2020 is when I first heard about the company and started research into it. And there's still stuff that I haven't learned. There's just so much more that company has going on than what I can even delve into. But that's one of the reasons I picked them and I'm so bullish on them. However, I also understood even in 2020, when I was first digging into things and researching, I recognized that even the short time frame for me would be 2025. I wanted to give the company at least that much time. I wanted to see where it was and where the stock price was trading at that point. Now, with what's happened over the last couple of years, and we've seen it, how drastically the market can turn overall. We've seen how the negative news narrative, as I've called it, can really affect things. We've seen the shorts and the negative pressure that they can put on stock price action, whether it's NEO or something else. And so for me, it's easy to go, hey, I'm willing to wait at least until 2027. If I need to simply add in a couple of years to the time frame and the lens that I'm using, well, all that really does is gives the company a couple more years to get more established, to hit profitability for all this other BS stuff that goes on that's really noise for me in the short term to sort of be weeded out. And, and that's my take on it. It's really that simple. Uh, I, I'm a very, very simple, I try to be a logical, straightforward kind of guy. I focus on the neo fundamentals. And you know what? With that in mind, let's talk about that for just a minute. I want to share this for those who haven't seen. Um, this is my. Twitter account. And fun fact, uh, on Saturday morning, I dropped a video and it was really about aesthetic stuff, about the models, the ET5 and ET7, the two sedans that Neo has come out with, both new models this year that have just started deliveries. In fact, the ET5 is so new that they're in their first month of deliveries. And that's important because check this out. This is a quote uh, quote tweet or retweet that I quoted uh, from Neo Global. And the Neo Global, I actually featured in shout out. I appreciate all the great content that is shared from Neo Global. This is not the official Neo Global account. The official account uh, has a, one of the blue verified stickers, I think, next to it. But this Neo Global account also puts out lots of good stuff. Lots of delivery pictures, lots of ET5s, uh, ET7s, a lot of the different models and data like this. Ranking of pure electric vehicle sales in September. The starting price is the official guide price announced in the month. More than 400,000 yuan. NEO came in first, second, and third with their three models, the ET7, the ES7, and the ES8. Now, here's what's really fun. The EC6... And the ES6 are lower price models. Both were still in the top five in their price range. So we've got all five of NEO's models that were able to be delivered for a full month within the top five in the premium segment in China. Why does this matter? This matters to me very much because China has an annual potential of the vehicle premium segment with 3 million sales. And I want to see NEO as the premium early mover in that space, in that segment, take as much of it as they possibly can. But that's why my tweet here, now let's see production and delivery numbers rocket, is relevant. Because you see the ET5, for example, which is being solely focused on out of the Neo Park plant, which is now online for the first full month of production and delivery numbers, we're going to get that entering into the fray. And I won't be surprised if it doesn't come in here with the new number one spot. And then Neo has maybe even one, two, three, four. And that's exactly what I want to see. The question after that will be how fast can Neo ramp and get deliveries up quite a bit more? And I actually, you know, I want to come back with the prediction on the quarter four deliveries. I talked briefly about it uh, in the 
live stream that I had on Friday. And what I did is Friday, I did a live stream for about an hour and a half. And then Thursday, I had an hour roughly video where I did comments and that sort of thing. So what I did on Saturday, I just didn't want to talk a whole lot about Neil. I figured there's plenty of content that I just put out. And so rather than do that, I did sort of an aesthetic video and shared clips and some vids from uh, some videos from this account on Twitter, Neil Global. And, and really, it's just one of those things where I wanted to switch things up. But this one, especially not knowing what's going to happen this upcoming week, I just think it's a matter of the lens and the perspective that people have with respect to Neo and not just Neo with any investment, because the concept is the key. And it's, and it's how you view things and how you value things. For me, the upside potential, especially for a stock price that is now trading roughly, uh, well, let's just say this. In March of 2020, we saw Neo stock run from $2 and change up to by January. In January, I think it was over $60. That is a significant run. And by the way, the company is a lot more fundamentally established now. I'm not in this play for some you know, short squeeze. This is a long-term fundamental play. I want to see the company at profitability. I hope we'll see that before 2024, which is when the CEO has said he thinks it'll happen. I want to see them in the shorter term get these numbers up. These delivery numbers are huge. And the faster Neo can take over more of the segment, you saw the metrics there. First, second, and third with the models. But how fast can they scale that? How fast can they get that up and really, really make an indent on that market? Because by the way, they just announced more European expansion and the folks in Europe want to buy the vehicles. And I don't think Neo expected to have some of the demand that they're already getting over there. So they need to get this production ramp up going and going successfully. I'm excited to talk. And in fact, I'm like I said, I'm waiting. I really wanted to do the video uh, with my quarter four numbers, but I'm going to wait because there's one data point I'm waiting to see on and I am hoping I'll see it early this week and then I'll come out with the video on that. But I'm really excited and trying to still be conservative. And I think conservatively, we're still going to see a new record in October for deliveries. I think we will see uh, November and then December also with new records for deliveries. I believe that some analysts and some folks, even smart money professionals, whatever you want to call them, uh, folks who frankly, I've noticed don't do a lot of deep dive research. I think some of those folks are really sleeping on this globally emerging brand. But it's also important, and I am in the U.S., so I can speak very clearly and openly about the fact a lot of people have no clue who Neo is. They don't know the brand yet. They are not aware of this company yet. And so I recognize, for me, that means I need to acknowledge that it may take more time. And if that means a couple more years, for me, simple, no problem. It's done. And if the big money wants to keep suppressing stock price or selling for whatever reason, that's okay. I know not just me, but a lot of other retail investors are happily buying and adding and doing what we can. Uh, I am not even buying new clothes, as you can see, so that I can afford a few more Neo bucks because I want to get another share. Let's go. Hey, folks, come back and see me again. I appreciate you stopping by. I'm just having fun doing this kind of content creation. You're getting to see me go from I mean, a few years ago, no internet for most of a decade, not even in the free world to now I'm learning and working on my thumbnail game, the little pictures at the, yeah, I'm having fun playing around with that stuff, trying to learn. Also slowly, I'm going to be implementing and learning how to do things better and become maybe one day uh, when I grow up, I'll become a professional content creator uh, because I, I consider myself very amateurish at this point. But regardless, I just want to say thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. Come back and see me again. Thanks, folks. We'll talk to you all again real soon.